So when we talk about the mechanism of action of opioids, we can, we can talk about it in terms of the receptors, opioid peptides and also the ion mechanisms. So this is an image from White's library. So from this image you can see that um, there are receptors that are along the descending pathways and also there are receptors in the midbrain and you have um, receptors in the medulla and the, in the basal ganglia and hypothalamus and also in the cerebral cortex. So, and you have three, at least three, um, well characterized opioid receptors, which are the mu, delta, and kappa receptors. So, the opioid analgesics can bind to the and mu, delta, and kappa. So, and mu, delta, and kappa are all involved in modulation of pain so the mu receptor yeah, can be found in the brain stem in the medial thalamus spinal cord and also the peripheral nervous system the kappa receptor can be found in the limbic and other diencephalic areas and also in the brain stem and the spinal cord the noticeptin orphanin FQ peptide receptor NOP can be found in central and the peripheral nervous system. Okay. So the effects for of the mu receptor include suprapinal analgesia, respiratory depression, euphoria, sedation, reduced um, gastrointestinal motility, which can lead to constipation and also physical dependence and the kappa also um, leads to analgesia mainly spinal analgesia and also sedation and also can cause shortness of breath dependence dysphoria diuresis and respiratory depression so the main receptor of course is the mu receptor and then we kappa and the uh, other receptors probably play a, 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 a more minor role compared to the mu and kappa receptors. So in our body we have um, endogenous peptides the, such as the encephalins, the dynorphin and also the beta endorphins. So these opioid peptides are synthesized in the soma and transported to the nerve endings and at the nerve endings they will accumulate in synaptic vesicles and when released from the nerve endings it will bind to the opiate receptors so these opiate peptides when they bind to the, the receptors it can be displaced from binding by opioid antagonists So these opioid peptides appear to, to control transmission at many sites in the brain and spinal cord and also in the primary efferents. And the opioid peptides are also found in the, the neural plexus of the gut, so in the GI system, and also can be found in the, the adrenal gland, specifically the adrenal medulla. Okay, ionic mechanisms. So opioid analgesics, they, they inhibit, they prevent synaptic activity through two main mechanisms by direct activation of opioid receptors. Okay, 
by directly activating the receptors it will in it will stop it will prevent synaptic activity and also by via the release of endogenous opioid peptides which are inhibitory to neurons so by doing both of this it will lead to inhibition of the synaptic activity so all the the three major opioid receptors, the, the mu, delta, and kappa receptors, are coupled to their effectors by G proteins. And they activate phospholipase C. They will activate phospholipase C or they will inhibit adenylyl cyclase. So you can see um, this picture is taken from cat zoom. So at the post synaptic level, so opioid um, receptor activation can cause um, I mean oh let's go to the presynaptic first. So at the presynaptic level the the opioid receptor activation can close the calcium channel, which is the voltage gated calcium channel, and this will inhibit transmitter release. So you will see an inhibition of the acetylcholine, norepinephrine, serotonin, glutamate, and substance P release. Okay, and this will eventually lead to reduction in pain. And also at the post synaptic level, you can we can see that the activation of the receptors can open potassium ion channels. Okay, and you have an increase in the so this will lead to increase in the potassium conductance. So there will be more potassium going out of the cells and then through the membranes, and this will lead to Membrane hyperpolarization, so and which will lead to an inhibitory postsynaptic potential. So let's talk about the acute effects of um, opioids. So let's talk about some of the acute effects of opioids so acutely when you give an opioid for example whether it's morphine or fentanyl or sufentanyl, remifentanyl, buprenorphine, methadone so in the acute stage you will the patient can undergo and feel analgesia no more pain Pain relieved. So the patient feels better as there is no pain is being reduced or there is no more pain. The pain score goes from 10 and becomes 5 or becomes 3 or maybe just becomes 8. Okay, depending on the dose that you give and the kind of um, opioid that you have given. And then you can see sedation. Sometimes patients become sleepy, drowsy, and sometimes they can become euphoric, become happy, very happy, elated, and can have meiosis, such as this. So the pupil size becomes smaller due to the effects of the opioid. And then you can have respiratory depression which is can be due to the mu um, or mu receptor effects and then anti infection no more coughing and then some patients might develop nausea and vomiting you can have GI effects gastrointestinal effects such as constipation and opioids can also <clears throat> 
So opioids can also um, cause contraction of biliary tract squid muscle, which may lead to spasm or colic of the biliary tract. And also your opioids can increase urethral and also the bladder's finger tone. And it, it also can reduce the uterine tone, which may lead to uh, a prolonged labor. Okay. And there are also some, I mean, when we talk about the um, the smooth muscle effects of opioids, we, um, we, we are making an exception to meperidine, of course. And then this is a, another um, effect of opioids which we have to bear in mind is that some opioids, especially morphine, can, um, due to their trigger of histamine release, so opioids can trigger histamine release, so which will lead to flushing and also um, itchiness, pruritus. And they also may cause the release of antidiuretic hormones, okay, due to their effects on the, the adrenal gland. And also they can cause release of prolactin. Okay. And we might see an exaggerated response to these opioids, especially in patients with um, insufficiency of the adrenal gland or if they have hypothyroidism. Now we go on to the chronic effects of opioids. Basically, they are tolerance and also dependence. So tolerance means that the the effect of the drug to to achieve the same effect, uh, you need to increase the dose. So, we, for example, if the patient can develop meiosis with the one milligram syrup morphine, okay, after one hour, after maybe not one hour, I mean maybe after a few minutes, but then. When they have, when they are given um, the same drug over a period of time, say so they will eventually they will need a higher dose. For example, maybe two milligrams instead of one milligram to achieve the same effect on the on the for example on analgesia. For for example, if they are, they have a chronic kind of pain and they are they are reading used to be. On the, on, the, on the liquid scale, the pain scale used to be 10 and to make it to 5 you need 1 milligram of morphine but then later on the patient needs 3 milligrams to get the same effect in the same amount of time so that means the patient has developed tolerance to the drug so the, the patients really develop tolerance to all the effects mentioned previously in the previous slide except to meiosis and also constipation and there is incomplete cross tolerance, meaning that you um, cross tolerance means the patient is becomes tolerant to one kind of opioid, for example morphine. So they will probably de develop tolerance to methadone, to ibuprofen, or other other drugs. But um, the cross tolerance is not complete, so you can still consider switching to another kind of opioid and without going to the equivalent high dose of that opioid. Okay, and this is the basis for opioid rotation. So physical dependence um, is an expected physiolog physiological response to chronic opioid therapy, especially with a strong agonist. And we can reveal and we can see physical dependence by abrupt discontinuation of a drug or you can see when you give an opioid antagonist okay when you give an opioid antagonist naloxone to or naltrexone to a physically dependent person an intense withdrawal will be seen you can see rhinorrhea lacrimation chills goose flesh muscle aches diarrhea yawning anxiety and hostility